Hey, Wes here. Thanks for joining me today. Recently, an archaeologist said that some Native American uh, pottery made before the Europeans showed up, that the mineral paint was just minerals and water. And that just didn't set right with me. All of the replica potters I know add clay to their minerals to get it to actually stick in the firing process. Otherwise, it tends just to rub off. Well, rather than discount it, or rather than believe it, I said, well, probably should do an experiment uh, to see if it does make a difference, and does the recipe that we use for mineral paints make a difference. So I'm going to try three different paints today. The first one will be, uh, this is hematite, so it'll be a red paint. Uh, then I have a piece of manganese dioxide, uh, which I got at an abandoned mine, and so this is a typical black paint. And then something extra, I have a, I call these Hopi nodules. I'm not sure what they're called. I got it from a Hopi potter, and this is what they use. And I've heard that sometimes you can use these without adding anything to it. So I'm going to try that out. So I'm going to do three different options here. One is just add water to it and see if that makes a difference. I'm going to add just bee weed to some of these minerals, see if that makes it stick. And then finally add clay to it like most people do to see if that'll keep it from being fugitive. And when I say fugitive, fugitive paint rubs off as opposed to being permanent. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, I want to show you how I make paint, uh, which I will do for all of these different samples. Here's the manganese. I have a flat rock or a pallet. And all I do is uh, take some water and rub my manganese or whatever I'm using uh, and make a really, really fine paint. I, I like it because I don't get any chunks in it or anything and it just seems to paint on more smoothly. Now when I normally make paint, I'll use water and clay and the mineral. So that my first one here, I'm just using the mineral and water. I'll then add the other materials as I go along. So I made some sherds uh, to help with firing, and I thought, well, I'll just use these for the experiment. And so what I've done is I've added a couple of colors or types of slip. Um, this slip here is actually uh, Hopi clay, and this uh, slip here came from some clay in New Mexico on Mount Taylor. And so I will use these uh, to paint the samples on and see what happens with those. Let's go over these real quickly. Both of these tiles are the same. The first three colors are manganese. This is the manganese here. Uh, one with just with water, then manganese with beeweed, and finally manganese with clay. The next three are the Hopi nodule. I know they look kind of brown. A lot of times it turns pretty black when I fire it with sheep dung. Uh, but again, just uh, with water, with beeweed, and with clay. And the final one is hematite, uh, water, uh, beeweed, and clay. And so each of these, uh, these are all the same. Uh, the only difference is in the middle of the up and down uh, ones, this is the manganese or black paint that I normally use, and the red paint that I normally use. And see if that makes any difference. It should be pretty similar. Um, but what I'll do is use these as uh, pottery sherds in a firing and take a look at them afterwards, see what it all looks like. The firing went well and everything looks fine. Uh, this looks like good paint right now. The question is, is this permanent paint or does it tend to be fugitive based on the recipe? So let's take a closer look. Okay, the question here is, are any of these paint recipes fugitive or permanent? First one is manganese. First line is just manganese with water. So let's just see. See, that comes off somewhat. It does stick somewhat too, but it comes out, it's pretty fugitive. The next one is the manganese with bee plant. Try to keep these separate. That comes off easily. And finally, the manganese with clay. This is the one that I would expect to be good. It seems to be pretty good. Okay, and then this is the uh, Hopi paint with just water. 
that's stuck pretty good. Pulpy paint with bee weed, somewhat fugitive, and then pulpy paint with some clay. That's good. And then finally the hematite with just water, it's somewhat fugitive. Now this is actually sticking better than I would expect it to overall. The second one is with bee plant that's coming off and then uh, with, with the clay. And this is the one again that we'd expect to be good. And that's good. These are the two uh, paints that I normally use. You can see if these come off or not, and they don't. Okay, I think what the thing to do is run this underwater, wash it, and see how much uh, we lose on this. Now I think maybe I'll just wash one side and so we can compare the two sides. So when I first started this experiment, I had an idea of what was going to happen, and I turned out to be wrong. And I talked to some different people before I did this, and they said, you absolutely have to have clay in your paint recipe. Otherwise, it will not stick. And it's true that if you take a mineral like iron oxide or manganese dioxide, put it on clay, and fire it, it the fire doesn't get hot enough for it to melt. You need something to encapsulate it. But what ended up happening was different than expected. Here are the outcomes. And I scrubbed this with soap and water and a rough sponge. And it all is somewhat permanent, but some better than others. The surprising thing, if you see the very first, well, that's the every third one, and it has a little X by it, that was just the mineral and, uh, and water. That's it. The second one that has a little negative sign by it is bee weed and some water in the mineral. And then the third one would be my normal recipe with some clay uh, in the mineral and obviously some water. So the one with just water and the one with clay, that worked out pretty darn well. I mean, if you look at this very first one and also this one down here, those are good black lines and that's just minerals and water. The one that did not work is the one with the bee weed. And what I think happened with that is the, the bee weed is basically like sugar. And if you look at it when you first paint it, it's kind of glossy. And I think that the bee weed keeps the mineral from being absorbed into the pottery, sucked into the pottery. Uh, and so a lot of that kind of washed off or, or was able to be abraded off. Uh, but otherwise, I think what's happening with the way I make my paint, I use a stone palette and rub the stone back and forth, I get super fine particles. I can't, I can't feel any particle at all. When I was buying those materials, the iron oxide from Amazon, it's fine too, but I could feel the texture to it. And I had a lot of issues with fugitive paint. I just generally don't anymore. Uh, but I mix it with clay and water, but really fine particles that are able to be absorbed into the clay and they get encapsulated. Uh, the clay of the pot fires, it turns ceramic and it, it grabs on to those mineral colors and they become permanent. And that certainly is made easier and better when you add clay to the recipe. And I think generally speaking adding clay to the recipe makes sense. But this is telling me that just using water in the mineral may be good enough and it may have been a way that uh, Native Americans were painting in some cases 600, 800 years ago before the uh, white folks from Europe showed up. Now, another thing that I think might be interesting, there are uh, minerals that you can buy that are nanoparticles. So they're, they're smaller than the typical iron oxide you'd buy on Amazon. And it's kind of expensive, but these are super tiny little particles. And it would be real interesting to paint with those and see how that worked out. And I think maybe another test is to make a pot, paint half of it with the regular clay recipe and the other half with just minerals and water and see how it turned out. Uh, but this tells me that we shouldn't always make assumptions that certain things are true 
and it's not a bad idea to do our own investigation because this tells me it is possible. I don't know if it's real or not, but it is possible that Native Americans painted with just uh, minerals and water. At some point, they probably learned to add clay. I don't know what they did. We'll never know that because we can't turn back the clock, although archaeologists can do scientific uh, laboratory analysis of those kinds of things. Uh, but anyway, very interesting stuff. And I would love it if you would make some comments. What do you think is really going on here? What is your experience? And please share those comments and any other comments that you have down below. Always helpful, always interesting, and always appreciated. So, and thank you again for the thumbs up that you give, the likes, those things, uh, sharing it with other people. It helps the these little channels grow. I don't have a whole lot of members, but I I value every one of you who take the time to watch. And so until next time, this is Wes wishing you health, happiness, peace, and love. Take care. Bye-bye.